Hey everyone, welcome to Sketch Today. I'm Spencer, where every day I give you something new and interesting about how to draw, sketch, and see the world around you. And today I have with me my iPad, iPad Pro actually, and my Apple Pencil right here. And we're going to look at some efficient ways to sketch and create concepts. Now I've done something similar by manipulating photos in the past, but what I'd like to do is kind of just build on a concept. One of the great things about technology is that it can really make our lives so much easier. So just being able to bring a photo in, manipulate it, is something I love to do with the iPad. I'll be using Procreate. It's a great app on the iPad Pro. No, they don't sponsor me, but it is fantastic. It's only six bucks too. So if you are if you have an iPad Pro or iPad and you wanna follow along, it's only six bucks, you can use Procreate. Um, otherwise, you can kind of use the same techniques uh, with pen and paper. Just get an overlay, print something out, use some tracing paper, and you can follow along and do what I'm doing. So without further ado, let's get started. So I have here, hopefully on the overhead you can see Procreate. Really simple interface, few tools up top, tools to the left. I did a video review of the app itself and you can check that out in my playlist or my videos. Just look for Procreate and you'll see the review that talks about all these tools. But I'm gonna import an image, paste it from the clipboard and you can see it's just the image of a head. Now I wanna do kind of a VR headset on this head. And if you're like me and you're not really good at drawing people, it's always helpful to have a little bit of a guide. So what I'm gonna do is use this as a guide for proportion and volume. And I'm gonna sketch with a blue Spencil. It is my custom brush I made, and yes, I will release it at some point. I'm still tweaking and trying to perfect things. So you can see here that what I'm trying to do is just outline, okay, the general mass of the head. So I kind of did an ellipse off axis here, which isn't 100% accurate in terms of representing the uh, volume, but it gives me a general sense of where I kind of need to head with that mass. And you can see that because I'm working from this photo, I'm really able to just kind of jump right in, okay, and start sketching some virtual reality like headset device on this, uh, let's say, this image mannequin that I brought in. I just went to Google, found something that works for me, something simple, and decided to use that. So really, sky's the limit. You can, you know, let's say you're designing a car or shoe or whatever, you can just bring an image in, start there, and see where you kind of end up which is really fun if you think about it. Um, this really opens up a lot of possibilities. But in terms of ideation, if you kind of have this human form to start with, it really takes out some of the stress of having to worry about the proportion and ergonomics of setting up a model yourself before you get started. And really, I can just leverage the perspective of this drawing, okay, I can even manipulate the perspective. So here's a little tip in Procreate. If you select something, you can tap and hold on one point, and now it switches to distort mode, and I can kind of distort or skew this drawing to better fit the perspective that I'm after. So kind of like Photoshop, where you can use the warp tool to get a similar effect, I can do that also in Procreate. So again, just using these blue lines is kind of my, my rough in lines here. And I want my headset to have another strap on top. And that's going to be kind of housed right here. And maybe on my VR headset, I've got, let's zoom in a little bit so you can see, maybe we've got a little camera right here that's kind of built into where the strap is. Okay. And... That's going to be nicely integrated into our little viewer here. And let's see, let's get these part lines fitting nice. We need some, probably need some cushioning in this thing as well. So be sure to work that in. Okay, maybe a little part line there. And let's say 
This headset also has some earphones or audio built in. So I can sketch that in over where the ears are, for example. And maybe they're open cans so that I can actually hear a little bit of my environment as I'm trapped in this virtual reality world. If you've tried anything like the Oculus Rift, it's really cool technology. Um, it can be a little bit disorienting. So obviously I'm not a researcher, but you know, maybe there's some benefit to being able to hear your surroundings on the outside as well. Okay, just a couple little fasteners here for this front plate and an indication. Okay, that comes out like so, and maybe some branding on the front. And I'm in a good place where I can now create a new layer and take this blue layer, knock the opacity back, and start to do my final sketch. So let's jump back to my Spencil, okay. And there we go, make it a little bit thicker. And now just pinch to zoom, zoom in, and I can start working on my nice clean sketch. But you can see that the Apple Pencil is indeed pressure sensitive, responds really well, okay, to pressure and the input itself on the screen. So whatever juju they've got going on in this thing, it's, uh, it's pretty cool, especially considering how thin and light this tablet is. It doesn't get hot, great battery life, and works pretty well. Okay, so here's my little camera indicator right there. And let's attach this Okay, to the front of our VR headset, like so. And because I sketched in blue lines first, I can use those as a guide to essentially re-sketch what I did before. Okay, a little bit around here for padding. Now I haven't, another question I've been getting quite a bit when I do these digital sketches is whether or not the iPad is really good at palm rejection. And I don't know if you can see on the camera here, but I'm touching the screen and I can move my hand around on the screen and watch as I take my hand off, there are no lines. So the palm rejection is really good. I'm happy to report. Okay. So hopefully that answers your questions about the palm rejection on the iPad Pro. But again, if you wanna see a more comprehensive review um, from an artist's perspective, you can check out my video where I cover a lot of those questions that you might have about the iPad Pro and how it performs in some of those situations that you might be wondering about. Okay, so a little part line there. Now, I won't be coloring this one. I know you guys probably want to see that, but for the sake of time, I'm going to keep this nice and brief, nice and short, because I wanted to focus on you know, the fact that you can actually create some cool sketches pretty quickly in using the iPad. Okay, If you just use a little creativity in how you approach things, especially if you're doing something that you haven't done before, or that you're not super comfortable with, you can really use the technology to your advantage to create a nice compelling sketch of something. So let's say you needed to design a motorcycle or something that you just aren't used to doing all the time. It's really neat to be able to just take a picture that you Google on the internet and within you know a minute be sketching a concept on that topic that you might not be super familiar with. So pretty cool tool. Now, yes, I know you can't use your favorite 3D package 
on the iPad Pro. But if you want to sketch, capture ideas, or even do some more finished tight drawings, you can also do that here. So it is a really capable and powerful tool. All right, I'm going to change that. I just did a line and I thought, oh, this is going to be cool, but then it kind of felt heavy. So I'm going to tweak a few things here. All right, so let's just rough that in. And finish out our main outline, throw in our part lines right here and right here. Like so, and I'm just gonna outline the head itself, okay. And just keep it keep it nice and loose on the head itself, at least the parts that you would be able to see. Sometimes the undo is a little bit uh, picky here, so I'm just going to go ahead and erase. I was just trying to get rid of that stroke. All right, so there I have a nice quick sketch and Let's say I want to just distinguish between a few parts really quickly. New layer, tap and hold, drag down, and let's pick a nice light gray color. And I'm gonna just color in really light gray. Okay, just in those areas that I want to kind of call out or hint at, or highlight rather. Okay, so something like that. And for the background, if this were just a quick concept sketch, I'm going to, let's see, let's actually put this behind our layer one, and I'm gonna switch the blending mode of that layer to multiply. And now, taking a nice soft brush, so I've got this nice big soft airbrush, make it really big, I'm gonna just paint on the outside perimeter of this concept, just on the outside, like so. And with a little bit of elbow grease, okay, and patience, just come in and erase. And so what that does is it sets up a nice contrast between the foreground and background, foreground being the concept or the sketch itself. And of course the background now being the airbrush that we put in. And it just gives you a nice kind of uh, depthy feeling background that you can work with. And you can either, you can do one of two things. One is to take another soft airbrush, maybe erase a little bit, soften some of this up, or you could of course adjust the opacity of that layer. But even things like leveraging the tone, okay, that's already established here. You can take an airbrush and just with the black airbrush come over and kind of reinforce the fact that this head has some roundness and shading to it, okay? So again, really quick way to capture and represent a concept using Procreate for iPad Pro. Hopefully you guys have picked up some interesting and useful tips. I've been using this tablet and other tablets for years now. Um, this one's kind of my daily driver and it's proved to be pretty valuable in my daily workflow. So just wanted to share with you another quick tip. I know it's similar to some other stuff that I've shared, but a little bit different at the same time, just sketching over a photograph and actually using that photograph as a part of your composition instead of just leaving that behind. Well, thanks for watching, and if you like what, what you've seen and you love sharing like I do, please share this video with your friends. Also, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash sketchaday.com. You can also find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash sketchaday, and also on Instagram at instagram.com slash sketchaday.com, or just at sketchaday.com. 
And what I like to do is post sketches that I do during the week, not necessarily videos. So if you'd like to see some of that, you can find me and follow me there. You can also find me on Twitter at Daily Sketches. If you'd like to leave a comment below, please leave a comment. Let me know what you like, dislike, what you want to see on the channel here in the future. I'd love to hear from you guys. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time right here on Sketch-A-Day.